teachers do work all those hours after school and on weekends to make sure that we are doing everything in our power for the children. Planning lessons, grading papers, and collaborating with colleagues. It's insulting to know that the Chicago Board of Trade got millions in TIF dollars to remodel their toilets while many of our schools are falling apart. Hello and good evening. My name is Daniel Vasquez and I'm a leader with Brighton Park Neighborhood Council. My name is Erin and I'm a leader with the Lakeview Action Coalition. Hello everybody! Good evening! My name is Linda and I am with SEIU Healthcare and we are here as moderators for the evening. Thank you KNTV for broadcasting our entire event to homes all across the city of Chicago. Let's give KNTV a big hand. All right. Now that's the enthusiasm we're looking for. Welcome to our first ever, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, all right, work with me here, work with me. Welcome to our first ever Chicago's People's City Council. We, while we are here, we will hear testimonies on the most important issues facing our city, and we will vote on a resolution. We're here tonight with automatic allies to talk about what type of city we can make together. The grassroots collaboration is proud to have 20 member ally organizations represented in the People's City Council meeting today. To start off our meeting, let's hear who's in the room. Action now, you're in the room. All right. Brick and Dyke, Redevelopment Corporation. Brighton Park Neighborhood Council. All right. Chicago Coalition for the Homeless. All right. Chicago's in the house. Chicago Teachers Union. All right, Chicago's in the house. In Lasse, Chicago. Woo! Illinois Hunger Coalition. All right. All right, let me hear it from Kenwood Oakland Community Organization. Lakeview Action Coalition. Logan Square Neighborhood Association. Metropolitan Attendance Organization. Pelson Alliance, SEIU Healthcare Illinois, Indiana, where's SEIU Local 1, SEIU Local 73, South organized for unity and liberation. The Southwest Organizing Project. And last but not least, Unite Here. MTO? My MTO is in the house. All right. 
that MTO. Thank you. MTO is in the house. We apologize for that. Thank you. All right. We keep hearing from business interests that we the people have to tighten our belts. Southwest Youth Collaborative. Well, I guess you can say Southwest is in the house. <laughs> When they say we have to live within our means, they are talking about cutting jobs and vital services for struggling and working families. Big banks, why the big bank corporation give all of our money away? They're taking all of our money. The People City Council say, enough is enough. enough, is enough. It's immoral and bad economics to balance the budgets on the back of the regular people of Chicago just to put the money in the pockets of the elite. Companies complain about taxes, but majority of the top companies here in Illinois pay less than 2% of their global earnings in taxes. How's that for a tax rate? We know that the budget deficit is not our fault, and yet they are laying off our teachers. They are denying raises for regular workers while they give raises and bonuses to the elite, to executives, and so much more. The People, Co People City Council declare we're not in a budget crisis. We are in the revenue crisis. Tonight, we will witness a debate around good jobs, housing, education, and public safety between corporate America, represented by Mr. Moneybags here, <laughs> a debate, a debate between corporate America and working families. Throughout each issue, we will hear stories of how working families are suffering while big banks and corporations are unfairly profiting. We will also get a chance to vote on how our money should be spent so that we have good jobs, affordable housing, quality education, and safe neighborhoods. Right. And you, the People's City Council will vote by literally standing up or raising your hand if you're unable for whichever side you think should get the money, the corporate side or the people. Our first section will be about how to create good jobs and stimulate our economy. First, let's hear from Mr. Moneybags. It's, it's wonderful to be here with all of you people, too. As we all know, times are tough, and thankfully my colleagues and I have recommendations for the city of Chicago. First off, all people should work for less. Wait. Second, second, get rid of the unions. Hey. This is economics here. When people get too uppity, it creates a bad economic climate. Uh, next, give me and my corporations money. If you give me $50 million, I can probably create a few jobs out of that. Thank you, thank you. Now, I, hey, I know some people say that we need a, a living wage job. Well then, go to college and better yourself. Public workers with their health care and pensions are a real drag on the economy. You know what I'm talking about. Mr. Moneybags, 
you and your friends are selfish and heartless. Even working families, working two and three jobs, is it fair that minimum wage earners still cannot afford to support their families? This system is broken. My name is Robert Bisbee. I am a park supervisor with the Chicago Park District, and I'm also a union steward with SEIU Local 73. And I love my job. To see the smiles on kids' faces, to see the progress from the beginning to the end, that's what keeps me going. A young man I once worked with was taking medication, and he was totally out of control. No one knew what to do with him. I quickly became the calming factor. The attention that I gave him and being a male role model made a big difference in his behavior and in his life. That's what we do as public workers. We serve the community. It takes a village to raise a child, and I am a part of that village. <laughs> Having a living wage job is also affords me the chance to support my family, because if I didn't have a living wage job, the last 10 years, my grandfather wouldn't have been able to stay with me. Unfortunately, January the 1st of this year, he made his transition home after 94 years. Everyone deserves a chance to do the same. The majority of public sector employees in Chicago are people of color. So trying to balance the budgets on the backs of workers means that it is the family of the color who pay the biggest price. Giving our tax dollars to million dollar corporations do not lead to economic development in our communities. Should boring executives get, get our tax dollars for a downtown heliport? While parks on the west side go understaffed. I am, a, I am proud to be able to provide for my community in Inglewood. As a public wor worker through the service as a park district employee, a community activist, and as a father. In the words of our First Lady, Michelle Obama, service is the rent we pay for living. Let us continue to pay the rent with a living wage job. Robert is right. Robert is right. The system is broken, and we have to change it. I am Kimberly Jr., and I am a member of United Here. I have worked at O'Hare Airport for Hudson News for the last three years. I am a sales associate, which means meeting and greeting the customers. I am the first person they see when they come to Chicago, and I am the person who consoles them when they are stranded. I even let them borrow my cell phone when they need to use it. I know that that's not part of my job. My job is to sell magazines. But really, my job is to welcome the people to Chicago. It is really an important job. But before me and my coworkers formed a union, I only made $8.75 an hour which means I supported my family on 17000 a year. You couldn't even buy a coffee mug for eight seventy five. A A coffee mug at Hudson News is twelve ninety nine. And even though I only make a little over minimum wage, I can't even get food stamps. I live with my two sons and my daughter-in-law and my granddaughter. Right now, my refrigerator is empty. And for the week, we will be eating soup. 
I get help from Section 8 to pay my rent, but even with that, I barely make it. Hudson News is owned by a company from Switzerland. The CEO made $3.5 million. None of that money benefits Chicago. But if I get a raise, I will spend my money right here in Logan Square area where I live. We have to keep fighting. The city has a living wage law that says that people who work for the city or companies for the city should, should at least make $11 an hour. Some airport workers like janitors get this. People like me who work in concession stands are excluded. That's not fair. Right now, oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> right now, as the city, the city is considering changing the companies that work out there and run concession at O'Hare and Midway Airport. 1,500 1, of us might lose our jobs. If these new companies come in, if these new companies come in, that's why we're going to pass the living wage ordinance and give us a living wage. All right. Working class people. You've heard two sides. Mr. Moneybags thinks that the way to a better economy is to get rid of public workers and instead give the money to subsidies. It's not too good. Like, wait a minute, like when he gave United Airlines $30 million. But he tells us it'll trickle down to us. Mr. Moneybags. The other choice is to make sure that public jobs stay public. All right? And that million dollar companies pay their wages a living wage. Not just any wage, but a living wage. A living wage. Now, investing our tax dollars in strong public service means strong communities and workers who can take care of their families. The airport living wage would mean hundreds of people in the airport would go from $9 an hour to $11 an hour, generating, here it is, generating millions of dollars each year for the area's economy. And if Illinois increases its minimum wage, it would generate billions, billions of dollars to our state. Now, you, the people, city council, will vote. If you agree with Mr. Moneybags, they're giving money, they're giving money to big corporations, it's the right choice, then you stand up. If you can't stand up, just wave your hand. Oh, I got a good one for you. I got another one for you. On the other hand, if you think that good jobs are the right way to build our economy, you stand up. And if you can't stand up, wave your hand. If you can't stand up, wave your hand. All right. People have spoken. The money should go to the working families to create good jobs. That's great. That's great. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Moneybags is back. And he wants to talk about housing. Now, you people don't seem to understand the way the world works. So let me, 
I'm... Hey, I'm, I'm, here to give, I'm here to give you an education this evening. So we, we are not a charity. We are what's called a business operating in something called a free market economy. Now, this means, hey, 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 this means that each one of us are responsible for the decisions that we make. Now, if you are all out there losing your homes, well, it's not my fault that they went into foreclosure. If people can't afford to live in our, if people can't afford to live in our city, then they should just leave. reckless lending that caused this foreclosure crisis and you are the ones still profiting from it and you are the ones still profiting from it while working families are losing their homes Chicago does not belongs to you it belongs to the people member of Action Now. Action Now! I am also one of the thousands of foreclosure victims that have been created by the big banks since 2006. When I started working with Action Now, we went to the banks to demand that they let me stay in my home, and that is what happened. After fighting for two years, I'm still in my home because... because we were able to mobilize the community. However, there are thousands of others that are suffering silence, losing everything they have worked so hard for. The community, <clears throat> there, are, there are currently more than 20,000 vacant buildings in our community that the banks can't sell. Instead of letting families pay, uh, make reasonable payments to stay in their homes, these greedy banks are kicking families out. And the property sits vacant and dilapidating, bringing the whole community down. There's something wrong with this picture. Well, I'm proud to tell you that yesterday, Alderman Pat Dow introduced a vacant property amendment that will charge a bank $500 to $1,000 per day. For every day that a property sits vacant, that will amount to $200 million in revenue for the city. And it's about time the big banks paid their fair share. Banks, you got a government bailout, and you didn't play by the rules. I've done my fair share, and when I lent you my tax dollars, now it's time for you to pay up. No more families losing their homes. No more vacant properties ruining our city. You don't own us. We own you. And we are here to take our money back. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Stephanie Hooker, and I am a leader and a board member with the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless. I am here as a formerly homeless person, and it bothers me to see homeless people sleeping in parks. In my life, I've had to sleep in parks because I couldn't get into homeless shelters on that particular night because of the shortage of spaces. Right now, I live in Deborah's Place in Garfield, which is a low-income, 
government subsidized building. I had to wait one year before I could get in there. While waiting, I had to stay with other people and still sleep in parks. If the city had used more property tax money or TIF money for affordable housing, I would not have had to go through that. Right now, Chicago spends a lot of TIF money on big corporations to make them happy. Two years ago, Chicago gave six million TIF dollars to move Willis Company into the Sears Tower. Last month, Bloomberg News reported that Willis Company was looking to sell the now Willis Tower to the highest bidder. Chicago does not need to subsidize corporations like Willis Company if they are making millions of dollars in profits. Chicago should be turning abandoned buildings into affordable housing for Chicago's growing homeless population. Do you know that what my neighbor could have done with $606 million, if my neighborhood got a fraction of that TIF money, we could have turned more than 200 abandoned buildings into affordable housing. We could have created hundreds of local jobs. This kind of idea can be possible if the city passes ordinances like Sweet Home Chicago that create more affordable housing by either turning foreclosures into affordable housing or building more affordable housing using TIF dollars. At the end of the day, the city needs to ask itself, what should we invest in? Affordable housing for the homeless and families and children or subsidized multi-million dollar companies like the Willis Company? Thank you. So, so you've heard the stories. Our families are suffering while banks and corporations are getting away without having to pay their fair share. They're even given our hard-earned money despite billions in profits. Is that right? No. Is that right? No. Well, it doesn't have to be this way. If we tax banks, for every foreclosed vacant property, we could generate approximately $20 million towards the city's deficit. Also, instead of our property tax dollars going to corporations, they could be used as incentive for affordable housing development. Again, you decide. Rise up if you're for corporations. All right, rise up if you're for working families. Okay, okay, now we're getting somewhere. But here comes Moneybags to talk about education. I know he's got something to say here. Okay, all right, hold on. You and, you and I got off on the wrong foot, and I, I recognize that. Here, wait, here's something that we can all agree on. Our children are getting the shaft in the city of Chicago. Isn't that right? That, this is true. And you know who it is? It's these greedy teachers that spend hours prepping for classes, deal with up to 38 children in one class. They, advise school groups, they run musicals, all this blah, 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 non-teaching nonsense. They have failed us. And I'm telling you, it's not that 38 children in one class is too much or that poor school funding is the problem. No, it's these teachers. That you even get, wait, if, if you're getting summers off, how hard can you really be working? And you know who else it is? It's those parents. Quit being lazy and get involved with your kids. Just because you're working two jobs to pay the bills, that's no excuse. Parents and teachers are the problem. Say it with me. Parents and teachers are the problem. No, Mr. Moneybags. Teachers. 
Teachers are dedicated, hardworking people, and class size is a serious obstacle to student performance. My name is Maria Moreno, and I am a second grade Chicago public school teacher. This year, I had 27 bright students who were English language learners. Many students spoke English, but one like little Juana couldn't speak a word of it. I had some students who could do multiplication already, and a few who couldn't add five plus six. I tailor every lesson to address their individual needs because every child deserves the best opportunity to learn. Can you imagine doing that for 27 unique students? The studies I've read say that kindergarten through third grade classes shouldn't have more than 20 students. One teacher told me she had a kindergarten class of 39 students. Our students are missing out on the individualized attention that they need. The Board of Education and the business circles they mix in may call this shared sacrifice, but really, what are they sacrificing? They must have a funny idea of what sharing means, and it isn't the kind of sharing I teach in my classroom. If my students shared like them, they'd get a note sent home. Maybe it's time we sent a note home to the bankers. Yes, Mr. Moneybags, we teachers do work all those hours after school and on weekends to make sure that we are doing everything in our power for the children. Planning lessons, grading papers, and collaborating with colleagues. It's insulting to know that the Chicago Board of Trade got millions in TIF dollars to remodel their toilets while many of our schools are falling apart. If students are in schools without functioning basic amenities, how will they feel safe enough to learn? The Board of Education needs to sit down with the banks and renegotiate the toxic swap deals. Those deals were supposed to save our schools from high interest rates, but thanks to the economic meltdown, the very banks that tanked our economy profit off of the schools to the tune of 36 million every year. Even worse, TIFs take $260 million from our schools every single year. That's a lot of materials and additional staff to provide for the needs of our children. If banks did more sharing, our kids wouldn't have to sacrifice. Thank you. I agree 100% with Maria. My name is Marissa Johnson, and I'm a leader with soul. <laughs> Not only am I the product of CPS and some very, very dedicated teachers, but I'm the mother of four children currently in the CPS system. Ever since I was a little girl, I can remember reading the plaque on the front door of my school, our children are our future. And I believed it. I live in Bronzeville, and none of my kids can walk to school. Why, you may wonder, especially when I tell you I can see the nearest elementary school from my living room window. Well, it's because the schools in my neighborhood lack the staff and the funds to provide the best education for my kids. My 17-year-old daughter is a senior at Lane Tech College Prep. <laughs> but she has to get up at 5 a.m. every morning to go to school. She doesn't come home until after 7 o'clock at night. I'm sure y'all can relate to me when I say I'm concerned for her safety, traveling four hours round trip five days a week. My other three children attend Turner Drew Language Academy, and I have to take a bus and a train just to make sure they're there by 7.30 a.m. I have a 13-year-old son who has special needs. There's not enough trained professionals to even begin the process of addressing his needs. So, instead of him being properly evaluated, next year he's gonna be repeating the seventh grade. 
And I found that pretty damn frustrating. I've been fighting this battle for him since he was in kindergarten. There have been times when I had to homeschool him myself because he wasn't able to get what he needed in the classroom. CPS is short on resources and large on class sizes. And I, for one, know that ain't right. With all the cuts they've already made in the schools, that's the last place the city needs to be making, money, making cuts. In fact, they should invest money back into the schools. The bottom line, the bottom line is that all schools deserve to be well funded. Instead of experimenting and creating new schools, we need to improve the schools we already have. We need you to vote. If we return TIF monies to CPS and ne negotiate interest rate swap deals with the banks, we could generate a total of $296 million for public schools and working families. If you want to vote for money, for more money to banks and big businesses while we lay off our teachers and CPS workers, cut our school staff and cram even more students into a classroom, please rise up. All right, all right. Now, if you want to vote for direct money to go towards ensuring quality education for all Chicago Public School students, please rise up. The people has spoken. These students are Chicago's future. And it's time the city started acting like it. And now, Mr. Moneybag has something to say about public safety. So I, I, I can tell, I can tell this is a very misguided room full of people. But I'm going to keep talking straight to you. It's a shame that our schools don't get enough resources, but at least our prisons are thriving. And we need, we need to keep that up. Hey, if these kids can't handle jobs anyways, we need to crack down on them to keep you all safe. Besides, I'd rather have your money spent on bringing more of my friends to town than by putting your children to work. Don't you realize that I need the good cops downtown for my meetings and G8 summits? My money and my interests have to be protected. And we don't have time to waste on community-driven police work in your communities. Yeah, you don't want to hear it because it's right. Schools, not jails. Schools, not jails. Schools, not jails. Schools not jails! Schools not jails! <laughs> uh, my name is Kristen Buford, and I'm a representative of Generation Y and the Southwest Youth Collaborative. I want y'all to follow me real quick and go back a couple of years of my life. I used to be that youth that Mr. Moneybags was talking about. I sold drugs, I robbed, I committed acts of violence against people in my community. 
I didn't go to school. I didn't have a job. But all that changed. And you want to know why? It wasn't going to jail a few times. It wasn't somebody telling me I did something wrong. I knew I had did something wrong. It was a community-based organization called the Southwest Youth Collaborative that changed my life. It was a group of supporting, caring adults and youth that helped me to make the change and become the person I am today. You see, before Southwest Youth Collaborative, I felt like there was no place for a young person like me. I had no place to hang out, no place to be surrounded by positive people, no place to express myself positively. I only knew the bad I could do, I only knew what I couldn't do and where I couldn't go. You see, that's what public safety looks like in my community. I felt like there was no place for a young person like me. I had no place to hang out, no friends. You see, all my life I've been to being told that the words no, don't, you can't stop, this not for you, um, or what public safety were in my community. You see, youth are just trying to find a place to be. And everywhere we look, doors are being closed. Our young people have few places to hang out and to just be young, young people. You see, a large part of public safety is about where the money goes. And in my community, students watch as their classmates disappear into the prison system. <laughs> Why? Because CPS spends $70 million on more armed police officers and police booking stations inside Chicago public schools. Instead of investing in restorative justice models and support services. How many counselors could we buy with $70 million? Community investment like good jobs for our parents, summer jobs for youth, better schools and education, more community centers. The simple re resources that proactively support us are crucial to our communities. Community investment should include community-based alternatives to give our communities the tools and skills to resolve the issues. Our public safety is being measured by the number of funerals and, ho and hospital visits we make to our loved ones. Our public safety has been neglected. And in order to have public safety, we need to have more investment, better schools, better parks, more youth centers. We need money to fix the broken lights and cracked streets in our neighborhoods. We need to invest in the lives of our young people, not to throw those lives away. It's now time for the People's City Council to vote. We have to decide what public safety means to us. If you think it means targeting our youth and sending them to prison before they even have a chance, police resource diverted to protect corporate interests, and no summer jobs, you vote now. Now, on the other hand, if you think that public safety means community-based policing, strategies, restorative justice, and giving our youth a chance to thrive, you rise up now. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Standing up for our youth. Now, it's pretty clear that the people, city council, know what they're talking about. And we know what you're thinking. <laughs> All right, there has been consistent voting to prioritize working families over big banks and corporations. In this spirit, I move to introduce the People's Resolution.
People's Resolution. It says, whereas Chicago has historically been home to working class families from all over the world, and whereas 43.3% of Chicagoans are low income or living in poverty, and whereas airport workers make 8,830 under the poverty level for a family of four, and whereas public sector jobs are key to the economic empowerment of working families, especially in communities of color, and whereas, whereas J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and other big banks use toxic swap deals to unfairly take roughly 100 $12 million every year from the city of Chicago and Chicago Public Schools. Whereas foreclosures have cost the city a toll of approximately $1 billion since 2008, caused significant distress for working families, and decreased the quality of the life in our city's neighborhoods. And Whereas we have 4,000 less summer jobs for youth than this year than we had in 2010. Be it resolved that the aldermen and the people of Chicago gather here on this day, Thursday, July 7th, 2011, supporting the following, prioritizing families, neighborhoods, and communities over an agenda that prioritizes banks, corporations, and financiers. Finding in the year 2012 budget revenue solutions that do not burden working families and that makes banks and corporations pay their fair share. Enacting, all right, paying their fair share, enacting fundamental TIF reforms that leads to strong public schools, parks, libraries, affordable housing, and city services. Coming together within 120 days to discuss how to keep working families a priority for the city of Chicago. Alderman. Alderman. You guys hear me? Yeah? All right. Alderman, we ask you to please stand up. Alderman. And as a group, answer yes or no to the following principles. Do you agree prioritizing families, neighborhoods, communities over an agenda that prioritizes banks and corporations? Find 2012 budget revenue solutions that do not burden working families and make banks and corporations Pay their fair share? Yes. 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 Enact fundamental, fundamental TIF reform that leads to strong public schools, parks, libraries, affordable housing, and city services? And will you continue working with us by meeting with us within 120 days to keep working families our number one priority here in Chicago? All right, let's hear it for our elected officials. We're going to have a chance 
to hear from our Aldermanic allies next. We are honored to have you here, Aldermen, tonight as allies, and others even who couldn't be here tonight. And before moving to adopt this resolution, we want to invite all the aldermen present to share with us your thoughts and commitments to supporting a people's agenda. If you voted yes, please sign the resolution on your way up to the mic. Because we are tight on time, you'll each have 90 seconds to speak. And we're sorry, but we will have to cut your mic if you go over time. <laughs> we want to hear from everyone. We'll go in ward number, uh, according to ward. Um, we do have a very energetic crowd tonight, and that's great. But remember, the aldermen have our, uh, are here as our partners, and I ask that you be respectful and listen um, as they speak. And some aldermen, I want to point out, were here earlier and had to leave early. Um, alderman Munoz and Fioretti have both already signed the document. So. Okay, Alderman Dowell. All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Um, I just want to tell the Grassroots Collaborative that this is a very creative way to activism. I love it. So can give yourselves a hand. I guess um, what I want to say is that the bottom line is that we have to invest in people. And people are always saying that there's not enough money. But the reality is, is that there's plenty of money. And we just have to find the priorities that include people. Now, this is not easy, because many of us here today, we support everything that's on this agenda, but we work in a political process, and that process demands your involvement. That means we have to have sustained activism. It means going out from beyond this room and doing this every day. It means that we have to be collaborative in our approach, that your agenda is my agenda, my agenda is your agenda, because if we're really serious about the future of our children, there should be no problem. So I'm just here to eat this evening to show my support to the working with the glass, Grassroot Collaborative and all of my colleagues, all of which come to this position because we fundamentally care about people and we care about children. And now we have to show you. Thank you. I also stand and rise in support of this resolution. I think as we go forward from this point on, we have to be aware that we may not always have common friends, but we always have these common interests right here, and that's for the working families and children in the city of Chicago. I want to make sure that we all, as Alderman Dow just previously stated, do everything within our power to support families and children here in the city, because if we don't invest in the children's future, you know, we're lost. So I support this resolution. I want to make sure that we are all working together towards one common goal and objective, to make sure that we support families, support workers in the city of Chicago, eliminate the privatiz over privatization of the assets in the city, and make sure that we rise up or fall together as a group. Thank you very much. Alderman Harris. Good evening. 
As we talk about our communities, I want us to all sit up here as we look and see we're all a rainbow coalition, Absolutely. all my colleagues. And that as we move forward, we get to realize that sometimes we are going to disagree, but that should be okay so we can move forward. But we should also understand that as we move forward, we cannot have a one size fit all for every community. So all our communities are different, and that's why I said we're a rainbow coalition. What's going to work in Alderman Moore's community won't work on my side of town because we are two different animals as we live and breathe. But I stand here committed to take care of my children, my schools, my parks, as I have used TIF dollars to build parks because it's a priority as I take TIF dollars to rebuild the park named after my aunt, Lorraine Dixon, Lorraine Dixon Park. I'm taking TIF dollars because she left the legacy of hard work and dedication to this community, and I would be remiss if I let her die in vain. And so I thank you for allowing me to be here today. Alderman Folks. a lot of new faces that I see from being a community activist so some of you that don't know now you know I have been fighting with all of you guys before standing up here as an alderman before my name and I and I haven't forgotten who raised me I haven't forgot where I come from so I always got your back I've I've walked and marched with every rainbow every blue shirt, purple shirt, burgundy shirt, red shirt, yellow shirt, orange shirt. But before I go, I want this to be a, good, a homecoming for me and I wanna ask, you all are asking a lot, so I'm gonna ask something for you. Just about three times, I want you to make me feel real good and make this a true homecoming. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. I got your back. Alderman Thompson. Alderman Thompson. everybody I'm here this evening because I believe that all working families deserve a chance to succeed and the only way to succeed if you're paid a decent salary for a decent day's work so I do support your resolution Alderman Burnett Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, I stand for work for families. I also stand for using our TIF money to help the needy, not the greedy. And I understand that we have to do some corporate welfare sometimes but we cannot do corporate welfare all the time on the backs of the people in the community who need it. So I stand today with you all on TIF reform to be given back to people in the communities. Thank you. Alderman Irvin. Thank y'all for having us out here today. This is 
what we need. We need people standing up behind us, standing with us, keeping us grounded, keeping us where we need to be with our people. I don't know no rich folks in the 28th Ward. They don't exist. I can't support them, but I have to support the working families and the people that elected me, the people that are out here, the people like yourselves. I came out here and supported my friends from Unite here. They invited me tonight and to stand in support, and we're going to keep moving and pushing this thing to that level, and we definitely are in support of what you all are talking about, and I support this resolution wholeheartedly because, like I said, you know, rich folks in the 28th Ward, because we are working and working hard, and we want to get what I just do is. Thank you much. Alderman Graham. Good evening. I stand here supporting this resolution, being a former homeless person. I had a hand to get up. I know what it's like to need affordable housing. I know what it's like to send my children to a quality public school. I support this resolution for a good day's work for a handsome pay. I'm here, thank you for the invitation to be here and I'll sign this resolution. Alderman Wagaspeck. My signature is my promise to all of you to keep fighting for the people that built this city in the first place. The teachers, the workers at the airport, the workers in the hotels, people who might be homeless, all the people who are here today who don't get the same respect that we used to give, that has to change. The way we do business in this city has to change because I'm tired of paying the Sultan of Abu Dhabi every time I plug that meter. I want our money coming back to Chicago, staying in Chicago, and I want you to know that everybody up on this stage is going to promise to spend your money wisely, to put our money back into the parks, our schools, and the services that we need to make our city strong again. Thanks. Let's keep going. Ed. Alderman Sposato. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for having me here. I greatly appreciate it. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Uh, there's pros and cons to being at the end, and uh, there's a lot of tough acts to follow, let me tell you. So a lot, a lot of great speakers, a lot of people behind you 100%. So, and I'm here with them, 100% behind you guys. That's what I'm here for, to support not just your causes, but I consider them our causes. So we're 100% behind you. So let's keep fighting, let's keep showing up and doing what we have to do. Thank you very much for having me here. Alderman Cullerton. Good evening. Brothers and sisters, it's an honor to be here tonight. Uh, as a 41-year member of Local 134, an active card-carrying member of a union, as my father was, his father before him, and his father before him. I won't forget that the people from Unite Here won, Chicago Teachers Union, SEIU, SEIU Healthcare, AFSCME, walked, walked with me during my campaign. They helped me financially, they helped me emotionally, and they helped me knock on doors. I will not forget you. I would like to, uh, I would like Mr. Moneybags to take off his hat and I think we should give the character, behind the character, a round of applause for uh, his good work tonight. And remember, the first three letters in the word union are you and I. Thank you very much.
Alderman Tunney was here earlier as well, but had to leave. He did recommit to these principles before he left as well. <laughs> Alderman Arena. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I think it's time that we look at what happened in the past years. Corporations got the help they needed. It's now time for the working families to get the help they need. It's time to say communities over corporations. Bring the TIF money back to our schools that half, on average, half of our high school students go in to a neighborhood high school and half of them don't come out. We need to graduate these kids. We need to give them opportunities to forget about, to look, focus on the best and the brightest now and forget about the potential for the best and the brightest in our schools. We need to bring every child through our system, give them a chance at a great education. I want to see workers at the airports getting a fair wage to feed their families. And I stand in support of this resolution to honor the commitment you made to me. I want to make it back to you. Thank you very much. Alderman Kappelman. It is wonderful to, so, to see so many community activists in this audience tonight, give yourself a round of applause. You will change your neighborhood. You will change the city of Chicago, and you will change the world because of your activism. I'm one of those few people as a community activist all my life who got elected because I would not allow big money to, to buy this race. Not at all. There is something wrong with this city when the largest mental health facility in the Midwest is the Cook County Jail. There is something wrong in the city of Chicago when only 51% of its students graduate. And there is something very seriously wrong when, when many of my co-workers, when I worked as a social worker, felt they had to leave the city to find affordable housing and good education for their children. Now, there is a tough fight ahead of us. For all of us in city council, and a tough fight for you, and you know that, and that's why you're here. I am here to say that if we're going to win this fight, we have to show our elected leaders that doing the right thing is making sure that we provide jobs and education, health care, and affordable housing to all our residents here in Chicago. Thank you. Alderman, Alderman Pawar. What's going on everyone? It's great to be here. I just wanted to say that it's amazing what grassroots organization, grassroots politics, grassroots activism can do. We talk about Chicago as a city that works, and that, but what's clear to me is the old way of doing things no longer works, and that grassroots efforts can actually work, otherwise I would not be standing here today. Um, so what I ask from you going forward is that we are all up here as your legislators, as your city council, that our responsibility is to all of you and that if we're going to truly operate as one city, if we're really going to be the global city that we all talk about, that we're not just worried about what's going on in, what, in our area of the city, that we're actually taking care of one another. That we have to take care of one another. And so 
and I'll be short now. And finally, if you're going, if we're going to sustain this movement going forward, we need to stop shouting past one another. Stop shouting past our opposition and bring solutions to the table. I promise you, we're waiting at the table. Now we want you to come to the table. Thank you very much. Alderman Burns of the Fourth Ward has just joined us, so I'd like to give him his 90 seconds at the mic. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Sorry I was a little late. I was doing a little work in the fourth ward. My name is Will Burns. I'm glad to be with you tonight. Many of you know me from my fight in Springfield, working alongside people like Deborah Graham and others, Harry Osterman, to fight for funding for human services, to fight for education funding, to fight for a decent and honest state. And I will continue that fight in the city council because people are struggling in these difficult economic times. People need a job. People need schools that teach them. People need a health care system that provides real health care to real people. And I want you to know that I'll join with you in that fight. Now, we're not going to be able to get everything we want in this fight, but we've got to fight hard for things that we think are important. I'm with you in that. God bless you all. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Alderman Moore. Good evening, I uh, bring you greetings from the 49th Ward of Chicago, which is the first political jurisdiction in the nation to institute participatory budgeting, where we give the people of my ward not only a voice, but the power to decide how their tax dollars are being spent. And that's what we're here for tonight, is give the people the power. Now, I have the perhaps dubious distinction of being the most senior member of the city council here on a dais tonight. But one thing about being the most senior member, you've been around for a while, and you know that from time and time again, when they say we couldn't do something, the people rose up and did it. When the, when the city of Chicago was dead last in major cities spending money on affordable housing, the people rose up and demanded more funding for affordable housing, and we got it. When the people demanded inclusionary zoning in this city. There was a lot of resistance. And together with, the, with Walter Burnett, we fought for more inclusionary zoning and were able to get at least part of the way to doing that. When, we, when they said we couldn't get a living wage ordinance passed in the, city of, in the city of Chicago, the folks in this audience rose up and pressured the mayor and the city council to enact a, a living wage ordinance here in the city of Chicago. And so tonight, we're faced with one of the most daunting challenges ever, and that is to make sure that at this time of so-called fiscal austerity, that the needs of the people are protected, that those who are most vulnerable in our society are protected, that the homeless are protected, that, that youth are protected, that our senior citizens are protected. So when they talk about cutting the budget, we are going to rise up and make sure that the budget is not cut on the backs of those who are most vulnerable. And so I proudly sign this resolution. Let's give them all a round of applause for their support of the people's agenda. All right. Tonight, we have to introduce a people's resolution that supports working families, the homeless, young people, seniors, I, do I have a motion to adopt the resolution? Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution? Maybe I better reread that again. Thank you, Alderman. Let's 
give them a big round of applause for their support for the people's agenda. Okay, tonight we have introduced a people's resolution that supports working families, the homeless, young people, and seniors. Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution? I thought you didn't hear me at first. That's why I had to say it all over again. Do I have a second? All right, that's what I'm talking about. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? The eyes have it. Congratulations to the people. <laughs> Mr. Moneybags. Mr. Moneybags. You are dismissed. Hello, good evening. My name is uh, Federico Padilla. I'm with the Illinois Hunger Coalition and I'm a community organizer. The, the people have sp spoken tonight. We have found hundreds of millions of dollars to address the 2012 City of Chicago budget and the Chicago Public School budget without laying off a single worker. We have built our vision of what and equity Chicago looks like. And it doesn't it look good? It looks really good. It's time our corporations pay their first share and we are going to work together with our allies on the city council to make sure that they will. Without pressure from us, do you think billion dollar corporations will be fair to working families? I don't think so. So we have some work to do. Tonight was only the beginning. On your seats, tonight was a postcard, English on one side and Spanish on the other. Will you please take a look at that card right now? We need, we need you to sign this postcard and commit to either or all of those things. Number one, meeting with you, Alderman, about these issues. Number two, writing a short letter to a newspaper about these issues. And number three, getting 10 others to sign a card. This is very important. This card will be used to show how much support we have for this issue. The next time they vote to give 15 millions to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or the next time they decide to lay off hundreds of workers and teachers, we will now pause for one minute while you fill out your cards. Well, Asher will now come around to collect your cards. Please do not leave today without having filled out those cards because we must build a movement and this is how we are going to do it. With one person committing to getting 10 others and so on and so on. Because we are the people and we have the power. With me, we are the people and we have the power. We are the people and we have the power. We are the people and we have the power. Who, whose money? Our money. Whose money? Our money. Whose money? Our money. And, and we are going to take it back. The first ever People City Council meeting, it's adjourned.